Yeah. Cool, marching band. And that was only because I was dating a twirler. So, um, great. I also have a business decision, or should I not even? No, well, can we hold off on that until yeah. after? If there's one word that's guaranteed to throw a scare into anyone, uh, in, 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 to, to any, to any um, uh, learned person in the United States, it's the word opera. We immediately think they sing everything loudly in foreign languages. So um, I, I think most people, um, I, I know uh, for years I did, um, avoid opera without ever having really experienced it. The trick, I think, in, um, to appreciating the uh, emotional reach of opera is not to, we are so used to being plot driven. So the trick is to give yourself into the emotional arc rather than trying to figure out which which uh, soprano is going to murder which tenor or which bass is going to um, etc etc um, Oh no, uh, there's some more chairs in there. What, uh, Tom, can you grab a couple more chairs? Um, we are also, for, uh, I don't know how I lucked out this semester, but I not only have a virtuoso violinist, but an aspiring opera singer who has graciously consented to perform tonight. Now, in all fairness, um, uh, she, ha you know, uh, she has to deal with um, not the greatest acoustics in the world, and a instead of a, an orchestra, um, pretty much just a CD. But um, I figure we'll, we'll, we'll all get it on the ground floor, and years from now, when she's headlining at the Metropolitan Opera, we can all say, I knew it when she was singing at Sussex County Community College. So, Diane, you need any help uh, setting up? Or, um, I believe it's set up. It's Steve, can you hit the switch on the bottom? Make that light go on. If you want to give us any background, on it's on the it's it's on the side facing you on the bottom, on that gray thing, on the other side right there. Bing, you're good. Yeah. Just give me a moment to touch this. Okay. I mean, Don Luigi Angela, and that's by Francesco Cilia from his opera Adrian Lefebvre, and um, it's in Italian. So even if you can't understand the words. Um, what it's about is basically this woman singing this aria and it's full of passion and beauty and she is she is basically crying out and saying, what am I but a fragile instrument, um, a weak and lowly handmaiden. And um, she's just giving tribute to her creator, God. So this is full of drama and passion. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Now, uh, oh, I'm sorry? 
and that was with just a CD. Uh, you know, um, and and you're, you're studying. And well, of course, the logical question is, you're 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 in Sussex County Community College. Why? <laughs> I mean, uh, really spectacular. Again, I, I think too many of us kind of. Uh, I know I certainly did. Uh, uh, you know, opera. Everything is sung in a foreign language. Uh, sometimes by women wearing helmets. So you know, we um, we avoid it like the plague. And I, I think, uh, I, I mean, I don't know the plot of that opera at all. But I was certainly able to respond to the emotion in her singing. Now, uh, the most difficult question of all: Who wants to follow those two? <laughs> What I'd like to do is um, to get uh, some of the performance pieces out of the way before everybody gets slowed down with pizza. I figure, uh, you know, after we eat, we can kind of like, it's easier to sit back and relax and watch the presentations. So, uh, so, but if anyone wants to um, show something, now Tom, what do you, what do you have for us? Uh, <clears throat> I was going to do a PowerPoint on why Mozart was the first punk rocker. Well, why don't we save that for right after pizza? Kyle, how about you? Um, I have a, a recording that's kind of like a soundscape of narrations and sounds from New York City. Actually, that might be kind of cool while we're kind of sitting and uh, eating. Does anyone have any anything they, uh, that, that they're going to actually perform? Yes? Oh, I was waiting to follow. You're waiting to follow. <laughs> Bowery! I have to follow. <laughs>
regime has changed Perhaps the fog is simply lifted Perhaps I woke up Clouds and purple clouds bellow and take a bow and graciously steal my eyes for the night. I saw girls walking dogs. Not an art made out of moss and logs. And a stand up comedian just hit the ground laughing. got caught in traffic and everyone read a light in the attic on summer nights black bras and bare legs to kick off the magic strange magic Rush up my spine in the clouds. Broke. My eyes came falling down to the sea and broke the moon into tiny glass boats. And down here the fish weren't shy, they exchanged soft blows with their eyes. No, oh, they were mermaids, no, oh, sirens. Hey, I saw you smile. And my eyes are waterlogged. Yeah, I've seen some wild visions. And though my body it cannot see you just about to splash me. And in the water, finally. Not see you just bow to splash me. I'm in the water finally. Before we get to Disney World, why don't that? Whoa, what are you doing here? Oh, Steve. Sit, <laughs> sit, grab a chair. Um, before we're from Disneyland, Kyle, are you uh, are you ready? Yeah, sure, I'm not. yeah. Are you um, a talented visual artist? Some of his work is on display at the student show. Um, he writes a pretty good academic paper, and much to my oh, surprise, awesome. um, I don't know why I should have been surprised, he's turned out to be a very talented uh, wordsmith. His uh, poems and um, written work is really exceptional. So it's always nice to see uh, you know, a student uh, kind of move from the promising category into the really producing category. So, um, lights.
the name Shweev, Shweev Kaba. A bench of red rain mahogany sits upon the loading dock of the Dover train station, where red brickwork and blocks of granite provide the foundation for a roof that holds triangular bits of oxidized copper. Commuters walk in and out of the mortise and tendon constructed oak doors. The steel driven rails sit upon creosote dipped oak timbers that sit upon crushed stone. Electric webbing entangles the air above the tracks. A howl is heard in the distance. <laughs> Steam hisses as it settles down to rest momentarily. <laughs> AM train is on time. I step foot onto the speckled floor that is a fiberglass linoleum. The window frames the world outside as the train begins its route. The gaps of land between each stop hold their own characteristics that define the world of each town. Old freight cars and the underbodies of bridges are painted with tags upon tags in an orchestral array of one's desire to create. The train's crew member has reached our car and clicks each ticket with a hole puncher. I look out the window to see the lake that mirrors a blue, white, and gray tan sky, and where the sun's light reflects a Hungary green of turquoise and teal aqua houses. There are workers tailoring suited grasses of a golf course. Homes are becoming more ornate and elaborate. We pass by striped arms that cross the forewarn vehicle with the rhythm of bells and flashing red lights. There are steel frames that have been grown from roots of concrete that scar the once was forest, only to return to the fern. <laughs> there are churches with copper rooftops and a crew cuts landscaping. One massive gray barked tree reveals the town's age. As we are traversing, the air around that train carries pink petals of another dog. Urban dwellings begin to topple over each other in a display of cubism, and where the streets begin to run in a grid-like pattern. The skyline is in the distance around 1112. The shapes are abstract grays and blues. Beneath these cubes are fields of golden wheat. More steel skeletons of pipework and coils of wire define the walls that begin to enclose upon us. 11.18, we've entered the tunnel, and all is darkness. Inside, the rails can be seen gleaming a blue and yellow from a work lamp. 11.28, the commuters begin to wrap their belongings as the speakers announce our arrival. Station. Dunkin' Donuts, Hudson News, 
Cappuccino, cappuccino, for seasoned people, clothed amongst dress shoes, high heels, converses, carrying cases of suits, briefcases, rolling robes of peacoats, Adidas, vans, gold belted boots, loafers, slip-ons, denim, and checkered suits with tans and curtains. There are steps, scuffs, swift shifts, and squeaks of a few days, weeks, old shoes. Those who keep hold of the daily news, those who watch attentively upon TV screens, and then there are those who are connected to the cyber world through the ear. Computer chip, Bluetooth, and photo booth, Twitter, and Facebook. But I'm trying to look for the stairs. Stepping aside, step by step, I move towards the door that stands between here and the outside world. That is New York City. There stood the scrapers that kissed the sky over 34th, where stone meets glass for a fast forward rewind to the past, where those many hands sculpted such colossal creations and molded formations upon foundations supported by underground beams. The streets are crisscrossed by foots pressed against pavement. Lovers stride, bicycles ride, abiding side by side. And being guided by a light does not seem to matter. Keep your pace, sprint, run, walk, talk amongst the crowd. By a bell's ring that sings for spare change until the river rearranges around a taxi who's trying to get by. Because there's no time for those who have places to go. You're the nomad of forever continuous sea. You're the obstacle course for those who've been walking here for years. The light turns red and everyone stomps their heels. Stood fast brake pads for the vessels that will stop you dead in your tracks. When the bus flies by like a rocket. Their plumes, a haze of smog as the light turns to reveal the subway ahead at 40th and 7th Avenue. I descended the stairs into the subway and walked through the turnstile. The express train number two was going to 72nd Street. My shoes stood upon large gum-stained, dark gray tiles. A wooden bench offered a seat for the delaying arrival. Train one was announced and brought some air that came along its travels. It settled with the squeaking of brakes and a hiss of steam as the doors opened to quiet faces from those of whom were standing and sitting as some passengers left and others filled the car's room. The doors fastened shut as the train continued on, revealing a mosaic of greens, purples, and tans that had been arranged on the wall. Olive green columns support the beam. recorded um, it while he was in New York City. Yeah, it's almost like a, um, even though the images, uh, uh, you talk about Impressionism, it's almost like a Cubist. As uh, all the Art History 2 students know or should know, Cubism means um, looking at one image, one impression, or one object from a variety of viewpoints all at once. Yeah, I, man, I, I, I think, uh, you should definitely follow up on this. I mean, a whole, conceptually, I think it's incredibly powerful. Uh, yeah. It um, sounded like you could hear it on public radio, and it also sounded like old-timey radio in parts, yeah, especially I, I, with I, the I, punching I, 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 of I things. Might want to I, I, I like the use of um, noises. I think you might want to experiment. And also, um, even though I, the photographs were good, even though I thought the photographs were great, I kept thinking, Maybe e e e even film or video. Yeah. 
because you had a nice disconnect going, a positive disconnect between what you were saying and what we were seeing, so we were constantly referencing back and forth. So I think this is definitely something you should explore. Very powerful. Drawing energy from where I can only imagine where uh, is going to do another song. So uh, and then it should bring us up time for some substance. So um, are you all set over here? And anyone who came late who missed her first. Um, it's okay. I didn't have the acoustics in here, so it's worked out so it's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it will totally blow you away. So while the intro is going, this is a little bit of an intro. Um, this is Borgia from the City of Figaro. It's the marriage of Figaro. Yeah. I want a picture of the group. Okay.
so um, I want you know um, my class. Yeah, Rose is a bitch throughout that entire. Do you have Ronaldo? Do what? Rose is incredibly huge. This is a large shot. Have fun. It's a large shot. You gotta move this. Yeah, he could have floated out the door. She could have drowned. They could have taken turns. Okay, kneel down or sit down in the front. There's a secret. No, just do it. You're gonna be in it, right? Yes. You're gonna. Okay. Where are you gonna be? I'll, I'll be in the back. All right, in the back. Can you see me, Don? Am I in the picture? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I'm the yeah. teacher. I'll be in the front. Yeah. Slide yeah. over just a little bit so I can. Can I get over here? Come here. Oh, you should switch up. Yo, she's in the front. No, that that I won't do. Oh, it didn't work. That worked for Burr Reynolds, but uh, you know, I couldn't pull it off. Someone said she went down. Steve. What's up? For picking up a picture taking, did you? Yeah, trying to find a well. Oh, okay. What? Noel is here. Yeah. What the heck? We're not all here. Oh, sit down, y'all. Oh. <laughs> Noel. James. James. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, we got everybody in? It, you're blocking. There you go. James oh. is visible now. Your soda in there and cupcakes. I don't want everybody to leave. Remember the class? Yeah, I need to. I'd like to get back together at maybe 10 after 8, quarter after 8, 9. Okay, where should I? I want to set up my pictures. Where should I set them up? This is the setup area. A video. <laughs> so cute. All right. Featuring the Boss Ball Band.
I just the words and stuff. Oh, yeah, I would think of that because I like literally didn't know anything about it. And I was just like, like school 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 board. and I was like, oh my god, I've like, never heard of this school. Is it is it's it's really very nice? Yeah, I love the white school building and everything. Like, it kind of becomes part of the sentence when you look at something that reminds you that we're yeah, I know my friends were mainly for Tim Roth. 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 Tim yeah, <laughs> we're making a band. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. What's it called? Um. <laughs> Art Slave. We're going to play soloist, so it's not Art Slave. Maybe like the Dina. The soloist. Yeah, this is the soloist. Oh, but that's the human. The self in a soloist. I need it. I mean, gimmick, you know, and then you can play the drums for us. Okay, I can do that. The soloist and the drums. The soloist and the drums. Very big surprise. Do you know what kind of cupcakes are in there? Chocolate. Chocolate? Vanilla? What do you prefer? No, I like chocolate. Um, is have you heard of Heberline? I think it's a Heberline. It's like a little Chinese, so, yeah, I think it's the son of the big Heberline. Okay, that's it. The son. Yeah. 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 Ye
And then we have Valerie as the Mona Lisa. Wow. Jane, wherever he smile. is, at, in Edward Monk's The Scream. Who's that? Doug. No, it's Jake. That's Jake. Jake. <laughs> you should bring it closer. <laughs> bring it up. So Show everyone. Everybody should come up and look. Maybe they're seated. <laughs> oh, damn you. <laughs> You're the one with the legs. Comfort. Move. You move. Um, so <laughs> then, that's the idea. We have uh, the chest, right? Yeah, yeah that's me. Yes. With Jefferson, that's the Madonna Jefferson. with the baby. <laughs> my my <laughs> weird big child. That's oh. my boy. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, All I can say is outstanding. Um, and then we just have a sampling of Sarah sitting on the couch. Uh -huh. with modern woman reclining. <laughs> we have uh, Mona Lisa, Valerie. Probably Ooh. enigmatic. Yeah, well, she really worked with me to take the picture. Like, everybody was really great as models. Well, what? They, they cooperated. Oh. Stephen, Stephen and Noel did some uh, <laughs> corralling, but they did a great job, too. Um, yeah, so it was a lot of fun, but she actually, like, Turned it around so she was like she was taking a selfie and she like held Mona Lisa next to her and she like made the face. You were great, Val. <laughs> you were great. And then she's like, "But well, you have to take the picture." So she made me turn it around and take it. So and she actually got this like sideways thing. It's great. But yeah, come up and see them. And then there's me and my boyfriend as Egyptian. You know, so I've already kind of done that scene before. So yeah, that's what I did. I found this all in art history, and if I had time, I would have drawn. All the rest of the little classes, little things, but I'm sorry, guys. Where's Valeria? Right Valeria! Uh, You're up. Okay. Woo. She's, uh, Lawrence is going to be probably. Uh, yeah. I guess I won't need a mirror anymore now that I have the painting. Uh, That's <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Most people are. Well, you do know, of course, we had. Classical musicians Enough. Enough. earlier. Enough. <laughs> Just... All right. Well, Mozart, at least to me, he was one of the first punk rockers, and I would compare him to the Clash because he really didn't care about what he was doing, how he was doing it. Just that his music was there and that people were listening. He didn't care about any norms. He was, in fact, a very vulgar, incredibly vulgar, and I emphasize on vulgar man. And even if you read letters between him and his wife, it's like a modern day porno to him. It's absolutely, well, not disgusting, just you wouldn't expect it for the times. He enjoyed fart jokes, and anyone who has ever seen the movie Amadeus, it was a very, very true interpretation of him. Has anyone ever seen Amadeus? Or the play? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I've, I saw both. It's a, it's, a, it's a story about the rivalry between uh, Salieri and Mozart, and, uh, it's, and it's a metaphor for mediocrity and genius, you know, so it's a... And yeah, Salieri totally killed Mozart. Um, he was put on this earth, well this I found online, it was really hard to find sources for this, believe it or not. He was put on this earth, it seems, not merely to provide any type of sorrow or an antidote to lose the loss, but to trouble our rest, to remind us that all is not well, that neither the center nor the perimeter can hold, that things are not what they seem to be, and that reality may well be interchangeable, that love is frail, life transient, and faith unstoppable. Doesn't that kind of sound like a Kurt Cobain uh, Sid Vicious, Marilyn Manson, Trent Reznor. I have actually heard Mozart compare to Kurt Cobain in the past. Yeah, it, they're actually very similar people, except he didn't hate his fans. Kurt did. And I compare him most to Sum 41, because the way their guitarists play are just, they're very I, classic. I assume right? that's a, a band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I lost popular music uh, five or six years ago, so... Do you know Blink-182? That's about as far as I go. I know Blink-182. If it wasn't for Mozart, Blink-182 would not have made every song. Yeah, 
that's every Blink-182 song. <laughs> 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 Alright, so you guys are ready? Yeah. 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 And, like I said, he was extremely vulgar, rude, extreme gutter mouth. I mean, if you know the opening of Amadeus, he's like in almost a sexual situation right before he was supposed to go on and play. But he embodied what the punk spirit was about, and that's not shoving holes in your body or wearing tight clothing or eyeliner or dyeing your hair, it's to live life. You don't really want to think of the English invasion, you want to think more like punk now, not with the screamo crap, but the enjoyment of just being alive and not really caring about what society says, about what the law says, just do what you need and what you want. And these are some of the things that people have said about his music. When the angels are praising God's name, they play Bach. However, when there's a party, Mozart is played, and even God enjoys it. And these are some of his quotes that kind of like embody a little bit of a punk type of feel. My, my favorite one is the last one. Nevertheless, the passions, whether violent or not, you can read it. Is to reach a point. Ne nevertheless, the passions, whether violent or not, should never be so expressed as to reach the point of causing disgust. And music, even in situations of the greatest horror, should never be painful to the ear, but should flatter and charm it, and thereby always remain music. You do know, of course, one of the, the, the second aria she sang was from The Marriage of Figaro, which was written by Mozart. Yeah, and uh, Mozart actually hated writing in Italian. Like he, my dad did not. He he loved writing operas in German. Like he had a whole upset about wanting to write operas in German because he thought the Italian language is just too nice. He he wrote an opera <laughs> called, called called Cosi Fan uh about uh, it's about women and um, even though I didn't it, it's laugh out loud funny even though I, I don't understand uh, Italian. So. Yeah, he was extremely, like, kind of out in left field with a lot of his humor. It was over. But there is, there is one little thing I found on YouTube that I probably should have prepared beforehand, but didn't. That might have been an idea. We were all since then. Yeah, I want to go so bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Is anything going to happen with the bumps? Like, it's like theater showing and a gun is the first act of a movie and it never goes on. I feel like I'm under pressure. I brought it for other people. They don't want to know Valerie is going to play the drums. I thought it was going to happen. Oh, yeah. Might, but yeah. this is great. It's very fucking loud. Right? Yeah, I was expecting it. They're like right there. They've been cooler. They're cooler. Oh, why don't you go out of your own? Uh, Jess. Hello, we'll take you soon. Okay, and then, um, because after, after 9, I'm going to see uh, Jim's presentation for the play a little bit longer, but I want to check it out. Hello. Eggs. Jake. Yeah, with the with the busy world, is everybody coming back? Yeah, it's great. Don't mind waiting for an hour. Oh, you think fast passes? Yeah, they have fast passes. Jake. What are you gonna do? Do you, you know when we get to see all the parade all the time? You go during the parade. Okay. My friend actually. Sorry, because I had no clue. I had no clue. I mean, I have, I have arthritic knees. Should that, will that get me in? Uh, if I jump to the headboard. Go ahead. Just get on it. Do it. You don't have to do a roll. Do a, do a whole explosion. Even waiting for bosses. Bosses, there's. It was. I don't have the other pedal on there. Mike, I found this over the car. What? I found this over the car. You have something that'll hook in. You're good. You gotta get in there. It's like, 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 it's like
You had to go. You had to go. So I'm not. It's one of the audience. Your role was good. June. Was it one of June? Yes. I had the dates upstairs in my office. Oh, you were in that movie. Okay, That's a really good one. Hey, yeah, where are you talking Believe about? it or not, there's no sex at Bandcamp. There's, there's, no there's a lot of sodomy, but no sex. There's a lot of sodomy, sodomy but no sex. There's nothing at Bandcamp. We walked around. Oh, oh it's just. And it didn't work. And that's my presentation. Slapstick. Do it again. Do a flip. I didn't know. That's okay. I'll throw it. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Don't smudge it. And that's my presentation. No. Are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. I didn't even hurt. Honestly. Really? Yeah. I have a big butt. <laughs> that's nice. Thanks, Thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> you say no. I don't have a butt. You can have some of mine. Sorry. I dropped my friend's Xbox on the floor and he cried. Who was it? He cried. It worked still. It got that red ring for a while, but it worked. Lights! Who doesn't cry over Xbox? It was my it's dark in here now, so don't move. Yeah. Stand right there. Okay, so... I'm not a painter. I'm not an artist. I'm an education major. I honestly took this class because it was a requirement. But I also really like art. All of my friends are some form of artist, whether it be painter or musician or whatever. So I decided to do a presentation that's someone near and dear to me. His name is Zach. He's 25 years old, and he's kind of local. He's from Pottsville, Pennsylvania, which is like mid-central Pocono area. And um, he's a painter and a musician. And um, I am very close to him, but I never actually sat down to like really talk to him and like get the details on his art and what he does. I'm around it all the time. I see him do it. We talk about it, but I never like really drilled him on it. So I decided to have an interview with him. And uh, I have some pictures of him and his art to show you guys. So there he is. Um, so I asked him, most of these pictures are taken by Don. Hi. Um, <laughs> or with Don's stuff, either way. But um, so I asked him, when did he exactly start painting? And he said, I started back in high school when I took a painting class. But it took a couple of, he took a couple of years break after that. And he started painting a lot more regularly about three years ago. And um, I asked him when did he start painting, or why did he start painting, he said, in high school it was just, you know, he needed to take an art class. But then he realized that he was pretty good, in his opinion anyway, in opinions of his teacher. And then uh, he liked the idea of playing and experimenting with color, he uses a lot of color in his work. Um, and uh, so he made it a hobby to pass the time and to keep him seen. And, um, I asked him, does he have any other formal training besides this? Because I didn't really know what he did after high school. We kind of stopped talking and then started talking again. And he, besides that class he took in high school, it, he has not had any training whatsoever. It's all just what he thought would look cool. And he looks stuff up on the internet like, oh, how would I make a water drop? But I'm going to go YouTube that, kind of. Um, and I asked him, how long does it exactly take him to finish a piece? And he said, it depends. Some pieces he works on between 10 minutes to a few hours a week, but it takes him months and months. The picture that's up there took him actually three years to make because I was waiting for it for three years. And finally got it a few months ago. And um, But other times he'll sit down. He'll sit down for like an hour and finish out a smaller piece. Uh, <coughs> I thought that was appropriate. And I asked him to describe his style. And he said it was a mix between abstract and surrealist landscapes, inspired mostly by nature and the cosmos, like one would envision in a cartoon like dream or an acid trip. So, um, and I asked him what exactly is his inspiration. He said, there's a multitude of things, usually nature found on Earth and in space. Sometimes emotion drives some of my, my work as well, such as a lust for someone or anger like what you'd find in some of my darker pieces, while others I would just want to try something new and experiment. So that's like with this. This one especially, because this was just him just trying to put cool stuff together, 
And we were trying to sell this um, a few weeks ago. And everybody's like, what are those orange blocks? Because they're able to place the tree and the silver droplets. You know, they think it's like a winter scene or something like that. But they're like, what are those orange blobs? He's like, I just wanted to make orange blobs. And they're all like, no, what does it mean? But that was just literally just him experimenting. And um, so, and I asked him, does any part of his past influence any of his work? He has a very, he had a very rough upbringing. He was taken out of a home when he was five years old. His biological parents were drug addicts. He, him and his uh, younger brothers and sisters were basically like emaciated and sick all the time. And his mom now, his mom and dad now, took him out of that situation. But then his father was also very abusive. So I was wondering if that influenced any of his stuff. And he said, when I asked him, does it any of his past influences. He said, I've always been fascinated by the woods and outside where I play as a child. Sometimes in my darker pieces, which will come up, um, uh, he would, uh, they, they're influenced by his feelings from the past, such as his history with his parents and his abuse from his uh, adopted father and various heartbreaks from girls and stuff and like that. But he doesn't usually do that in his art. That's more in his music, which I've heard some music written for some of his friends that kind of screwed him over, and it's not very nice. <laughs> and also, he uh, has color synthesia. I forget the specific strain of it, but if you don't know what it is, it's basically like you see like letters and numbers. His is this, and when he sees that, he sees a color, which is in this picture I can show you guys when lights are on. He did my name as he would see it like written down. He like did this for me for um, a Hanukkah present actually. So um, it's really neat. Um, I forget it's a specific kind. He had it kind of diagnosed. But um, yeah so and then I asked him how exactly does the synesthesia influence his art. And he said the some some of the words the way that the letters are arranged he likes a lot. Like the, he used an example, the word the word surreal. He they're like the, some of it's in these blues and purples, but then it would get hidden with these reds and oranges, and it mixed together really cool. So he would make a background or something that would go with this word that popped in his mind because of the way that it looked. It would flow well for him. That's why he said he really liked the way my name looked because it's all different colors jumbled together, and it mixes and makes a I, really cool. I have a question about yeah. it. Is it that he sees color or he associates? Color? He sees. He visually sees the color. Like he says, A is red, J is green. When he sees an A, he sees red. Yeah, like yeah, in his mind, he'll in, vision in his red. Mind. Okay. Yeah, no, he doesn't like see it there, but yeah. like, he pictures the color red in his head. Like okay. he can't just like when you read a word, you just read a word. Like, yeah. He'll see the colors as he looks at the letters. Oh, so he associates. Okay. So like. My name is these colors, and when he's like, if he reads it, like, say he was like looking me up on Facebook, this is what I would look like. Yeah. So, it's, I don't know, it's weird. I think it's neat. And um, like I said, that, like you saw the picture before, he's also a musician. He plays a lot of instruments. I, he, um, I asked him how many instruments does he actually know to play because I lost count. And he wrote that, he said, he plays the sitar, the guitar, the mandolin, a banjo, he played bass, he could play any sort of hand drum, didgeridoo, any kind of like recorder, um, and a ukulele and piano, he could play, if it has a string, he could play it. He says he's not talented, I'm like, okay, whatever, and he's playing a drum. I took that actually about four years ago. And I said, um, how does the music influence your art at all? And um, he says his music, when he creates music, because he writes his own music, I was trying to get him here to perform, but unfortunately he had work today, so he couldn't make it down. It takes about two hours to get here. So, um, and he has work tomorrow. And, um, but he's, his music is separate from painting. When he writes music, he doesn't do the painting. It's kind of a separate thing. But he'll listen to music while he paints. He'll use a lot of tribal or electrical music that's like, no words, and he'll like try to paint to the beat, either that or it's in complete and total silence, depending on his mood, really. And um, he does a lot of stuff with the two separate canvases, which I think is really cool looking in general. Like I said, I'm not really studying art, I just think it looks pretty, and it, I don't know.
And I asked him, I just wanted to get personal too, and I was like, what do you think is the best part of painting? And he said, being able to put something in my mind onto something others can physically see, though when I do paint, it's never just one thought. Um, this is hanging in his mom's house um, in the dining room. It's not really that, it's actually a smaller painting. It looks like it should be huge with a cathedral in it. I thought it was so cool and everybody wants it. He's like, no, that one's my mom's. And, um, and I, told, I asked him, well, then what's the worst part of painting? And he said, running out of paint. <laughs> that could be a problem. And then I asked him, where exactly does he see himself going? And he's like, he'd like to get his name out there as an artist and have people recognize my art as my own, whether it happens in my lifetime or after I'm dead. It's really a thought. It's really a cool thought to have my art made on history. Death is always a good career move for an artist. Yeah, right? That's what I was thinking when he said that to me. Um, it's not the most enjoyable. Well, and, your prices go way up. Yeah, it does. You know, Any form of art, really, too. Anything will go up. Yeah. Isn't that cool? He has two different ones. And one lady actually pointed out, he's looking like one of the green blobs in the middle. It looks like a turtle. <clears throat> that just made it cuter. Look at the turtle! Oh, he does look like it's turtle. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, you see it? Look like a little That's turtle. Um, and I asked him, I wanted to ask him, especially because he hasn't, you know, been to a class to sit down and learn what a definition of art is. I'm like, well, what's your definition of art? And then he said, basically, anything perceived as beautiful or moving by any single individual, even if only one person sees it as such, but the rest of the world doesn't, it's still art. So, and Aww. there's that to see the presentation end. <laughs> I guess. So this is your honey, right? Yeah. That's my honey. It is. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> okay, all that Jake is... This is just background intro. Oh, that is right. I, I gotta take it up. Yeah, it's adorable. It's so cute. I see you smile. <laughs> I guess. I have several works in the big archive down in the summer, so I'll be coming down here quite a bit. So if you ever, you know, if you ever want to vent about anything, just uh, shoot me an email like a day. Well, there was a famous case here in New York about 60 years ago, more or less. Quiet! A guy named Harry Thua who was rich from having money. He was filthy, stinking rich. He was fucking rich. He knew the richest people in the community jealous of the possibility his wife might call another man into marrying him. He was insanely jealous of the possibility she might have done it before marrying him. And Harry Thor was the kind of insane, possessive person who couldn't stand the thought that his wife fucked somebody else even before she even saw him. And he brooded over it and brooded and brooded. And one day he walked into the restaurant in, in Madison Square Garden and he shot Harry Thor. He shot Stanford White in plain sight of about 100 or 200 witnesses. And guess how much prison time he served? Zero. So 
going to How new knowledge has humbled the solid Whether we pass time and drift on a dime To supply the way we sleep will be once used for a sign The reason with our erotic environment does fit Somewhere between self-expression, self-refinement Plus extinction, I'm blinking, my god, you must know what I've been just thinking Which is, wanna grab you in the most predictable way And kiss your mouth and hear you say There's a dust bowl in our salty souls We're on a beach, baby boy, and hey, we're going old Gotta get off this old toast, it's some black and shoal And finally spend this safe, our seasick last lost hope I'm not an atheist, I used to be an atheist, but I had to give up I discovered I didn't have anything to say during the flow drive You know Oh, I mean, oh, random chance, random chance, random chance that, 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 does, that just does not convey the gravity of the situation. Just a little bit of the meeting, baby. 
to me and I pray to all the appropriate deities. I wrote this shit out. If you would stay from me, God, on the days of fresh face and bumping all the leaves. I know that you don't care, and I know you still want me.